Hi, I am Mrs. Sloan, and this is a video for my AP Biology students because we need to know all of the AP equations and formulas, when to use them and how to use them. That's what this video series is about. So I'm gonna make myself a little bit smaller. So in this video, what I'm gonna focus on is statistical analysis and probability. So when we look at this, first of all, this would have to do with your lab data, right? So when you're graphing your data, um, you want to be able to interpret it. And that's what statistical analysis does is it looks for trends and it looks for patterns. And so, sorry, I'm getting a pin here. And um, when you do probability, you're going with what certainty do I have this? Do I accept this? Is it statistically significant or is it not? All right, so the first equation I want you to look at is the mean. This is kind of a scary equation when you look at this, but all it means is averages. So just add up all your data points, right? And then you divide by the number of data points you have and you just calculate your average. And this is always represented by an, an X with a line over it, it just means average. Okay. Now, when you use standard deviation, you are checking your mean to see, does it represent your data points well? How spread out is your data? And I'll give you an example of how to do that in just a minute. And then number three, standard error of the mean, it takes into consideration the sample size. And one thing you want to know is the larger your sample size is, the smaller your standard error will be. Okay, and then the last one is just a test, the statistical analysis to draw conclusions. You could use a chi-square test, you could do a t-test. I'm gonna do that in a separate video. All right, so let's just start with the mean, figuring that out, okay? So here, you have two data sets. You have set A and you have set B. All right, so let's count, the, let's figure out the averages. One plus five plus nine is 15, 15 divided by three, because I have, this three right here is your n value equals three is five turns out to be my mean. That's my average. So if I plotted it on a bar graph, I plot five, right? But this sample set B, it also has a mean of five, an average of five. Do, does this data represent this average? Does this data represent this average? Well, that's why we need to check it Okay, with standard deviation. Does that mean represent my data? All right, so this is how we do that, okay? Don't, don't worry, it's easy. So here on sample A, okay, I already have my mean, and in your equation here, um, your, the E right here just means sum of, you're gonna add it up, and you'll take each of your individual data points, you will subtract off the mean, right, x with a line over it is the mean, and square that, and you will do it for all three of your data points here. And then you divide it by the sample size minus one. So let's do that for A. So I just said one minus five squared, five minus five squared, and nine minus five squared, and I just added all of that up, and it turns out to be 32. And then you just take your sample size. I had three in my sample minus one divided by two. 32 divided by two is 16. I take the square root and my standard deviation value is four. That means when I plot it on my graph, if I just did, if you've probably seen this already, plus or minus one standard deviation, when I plot my five, I gotta go four above and four below with my with my um, error bars, all right? Now, if I had to do two standard deviations, that would mean plus or minus eight on my average, right? Okay, so let's compare that to sample B. Doing the same calculations, I take each data point, I subtract off the average, the mean, and I square that value, right? Four minus five is minus one, minus one squared is just gonna be one. So this is one, this is zero, this is one, I add it up, it's two. Three minus one, that is my sample size minus one is two. Two over two is one, square root of that is one. That means plus or minus one standard deviation would be one and plus or minus two standard devi deviations, two times that is two. Where does that plus or minus come from? All right, let me show you here. Okay, this normal distribution of data, you will find that 
um, 68% of your data is gonna fall in plus or minus one standard deviation. Full 95% of your data is going to fall between plus or minus two standard deviations. And so when you are plotting, you will see those deviation lines on your graph. So I did a super simple one right here. So when I have, um, let's turn my page real quick. When I have my averages, which we calculated, right? Our average right here, our mean was five. These two very simple bar graphs look exactly the same. But once I plot the standard deviation, which would be for sample A, I'd have to go up plus four all the way to this would be nine, right? And minus four, this would be all the way to one. That means my data could fall really, within this entire range. But sample um, B, when I do it's plus or minus, plus one, and this would be minus one, so this would take me up to six, and this would take me down to four, this would be the range of my data. And that is just showing you plus or minus one standard deviation, right? I would, could include 95% of the data if I did plus or minus two standard deviations. Now, this mean here in B is more representative of the data than it is in A. Now, let's take a look now just to show you how you would do standard error because a lot of times it is actually standard error bars that you see plotted. All you have to do for standard error is you take your standard deviation that you already calculated, right? So our standard deviation for sample A was four, our standard deviation for sample B was one. The smaller the deviation, the better, right? So here, when you do this equation, equation you just put down your standard deviation, and then all you have to do is do square root of your sample size. So my sample size, right, was three. Remember we had three data points for each one of those. So four divided by the square root of three is 2.31. That is my standard error. So I could plot that, right? If I made a graph, right, and I did sample A and sample B, and remember the mean was the same for the for each of them, this time I could go up this. That would be one standard error bar, right, approximately, because um, I would need to go up by plus 2.31 or down by minus 2.31 if I was just doing one standard error. Whereas for stand for B, when you calculate that one up, I just need to do plus or minus 0.57. Right. So whose mean better is uh, does the data better represent? Right. This one would be more accurate um, as far as representing that mean. Now, let's take a look at these three different scenarios. So on this first scenario, you can see that the error bars include include the mean. So that means it could have been within that range of data. And so therefore, this data is probably not significant since their means are included in their error bars. Now, in scenario two, the means are not included in their error bars, but their error bars overlap. It's probably not significant, but you don't know for sure. Okay, you would have to do a test, like a chi-square test on it or a t-test on it to be sure. This one, you can see that their means do not overlap and their error bars do not overlap. So this is a statistically difference between these two types of behavior, right? I could do a chi-square test to verify that. All right, let's look at this scenario. Look at this one, what do you think? Okay, you can see that some, if we look where the means are, right, the means are included, if we go across here, the means are included within the error bar. So probably the difference amongst these are not statistically significant because all of their error bars do overlap for sure. Though this one right here, you can see the mean is outside of it. Um, um, the, the means themselves do not overlap, but the error bars do, so probably not a statistical difference. How about this one? In this one, we have 
uh, let's say, let's make sure, let's answer the question. It says, is there a significant difference of heart rate when doing 15 jumping jacks versus 20? Well, if you look at 15 and you look at 20, their means do not overlap and their error bars do not overlap. So yes, it is probably statistically significant. So you need to test those with a chi-square test or a t-test. I'm going to tell you for the college board, this is not one of the ones you have to know, but this one you do and I'll make a different video for that. And if you're one of my students, I will see you in class.